serious, what was your weirdest slash creepiest online experience? Attention! Serious, tag noticed jokes, puns, and off-topic comments are not permitted in any comment, parent or child. Parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed, along with their child replies. Report comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour, and posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing an AMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. I am a bot, and this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit if you have any questions or concerns. It seems I have some sort of online stalker right now. Someone giving out my number all over the internet claiming to be some attractive girl named Sarah. I have thirsty guys texting me almost every day looking to hook up. It was funny at first, but now that the random dick pics have started it's a bit much. I'm a dude, definitely not some horny girl named Sarah you met on Omegle. It is creepy because it started 6 months ago and is still happening consistently and I have no idea who it could be because I changed my number 12 months ago and only a handful of people I know IRL have the number. Some person did text me knowing the city and area I live in started threatening to find me if I didn't show him my boobs. It's just insanity. Just last week my wife asked on the community group whether she could walk people's dogs for them. She got a message from a dude saying he'd pay her $100 for a pair of her socks after she'd worn them for a day of walking. I was casual friends from someone I played RuneScape with for a year. We didn't know each other outside of RuneScape. One day we argue about something petty and suddenly they PM me all my details, my home address, my family members. My stomach sank. When I was a kid, my computer has hacked, I guess. I wasn't the only one using it, and definitely wasn't the one that got the virus, but a chat would pop up telling me to remove my shirt and undress, and the camera light turned on. I was like 9. A long time ago while playing Counter Strike 1. 6 I got into an argument with another player and they opened up my disk tray to my desktop computer. I turned my computer off and unplugged it so fast. That is when I truly learned how vulnerable you are on the internet back in the early 2000s. A few months ago I wasn't aware that scammers could send emails with your password on it, until recently. It was near midnight and I was doing online school, since I worked the entire day. I then decided to check my email and my spam folder, cause it's sometimes funny to see what ends up there. Well, I found an email that said my password as the first word, for some random site, but I was unsure which one it was. After that they said that they had a video of me having a fun time after they secretly turned my camera on. And they then went on to explain they got my password from a porn site, and complimented my tastes. They then demanded a dollar $1200 plus PayPal transaction and that if I didn't do it by midnight, they'd spread it to everyone I know and across the internet. I deleted the email, and was literally shaking. Then after a talk with a local police department, they told me that it was a scam, and that other people call for the same fears. So I just deleted it and so far nothing has happened. Definitely scared the shit out of me as I'm used to scam calls but not emails. I made sure to change my password on everything and have two-factor authentication, and I don't even have an account for porn. Stay safe, those scammers are persistent and will say anything to get petty money. From time to time I receive random text messages from different numbers and somehow the conversation always ends with you know me from the other person. I was playing GTA 5 a few years ago and I was talking in a lobby with the other players. One of them asks if I had went to Dollar General that day. I did so I asked why? I figured he was setting up a joke or something. He said he was at Dollar General earlier and recognized my voice and that he lived on 1st Street, which was the street next to mine. I didn't talk much after that. Some guy was harassing my friend who was a relatively popular cosplayer in our community. He kept taking weird pictures of her at cons and stalking her around town and such. One of those guys the cosplay is not consent is targeted to. I started fighting back, 
calling him names and a coward and such, daring him to target me instead. I was young and thought I was pretty invincible. He took the bait and started threatening both of us with bodily harm, which was enough to get him perma-banned from just about every con in our area. A few months after all this, I showed up at a con just to pick up said friend and my sister. While I was waiting at the door, I saw him. I knew him because he had a couple photos online we submitted so that the con people would know what he looked like. He was hanging around outside the convention center, unable to get in, just generally acting like a pissy idiot. We made eye contact. I don't think he knew who I was. He probably thought my friend's white knight was some big scary guy, not a skinny white girl still in her pom's uniform picking up her friend. It was chilling to see him there, to know that even though he couldn't go into the con, he was still around. He hasn't bothered her since and I think he's still blacklisted. Hopefully he learned his lesson and didn't just move on to harassing someone else. My kid once gave out his password to some random guy on the internet who promised he would level him up in a game. Yeah, that guy got into all my kids accounts and added his home address, which was in a different state. So, that got reported to the police and my I got to sit my then 11 year old down and have a very frank talk about what we don't ever do online with strangers. When I lived in a dorm my freshman year of college, there was a creepy dude who was always hitting on the girls. At first his messages were exactly what you'd expect. Like I'll treat you right girl and you ain't neither gone see a man like me. But after a few rejections, he started sending nonsense. Inca Finca do Ooh was one I'd get a lot, and variations thereof. I blocked him, but he created new accounts. Then one day he said he was going to come fuck me and I was going to like it. I screenshotted the hell out of that and reported it to the authorities. Turns out, I wasn't the only girl he'd been bothering. He got kicked out of school, was banned from being near the girls dorm, and the last I heard he was a delivery guy for Papa John's Pizza because he couldn't get a better job with a collective restraining order placed on him. I had an amusing experience once. I got a random message saying hi Annie, it was great to meet you last night. You were quite the kisser. I'm taken aback, as my name is Annie but I hadn't been out anywhere. So I reply saying. I'm sorry you've got the wrong number. He replied apologizing. Then about an hour later the number text again and said are you sure you are not Annie? I said I am called Annie. But I didn't kiss anyone last night I was at home. So I asked where he thought he had met me and he named a club that was in my local city. I was so confused. Curiosity got the better of me and I actually called him and we had a chat. It turned out he had kissed a girl called Danny and they ended up getting separated in the club and he wanted her number. He said he got my number from her friend that he had seen coming out of a toilet. I figured it must be someone I knew that had another friend called Annie and she gave the wrong Annie's number. He described what she looked and I narrowed it down to three people. I sent out a text to them and sure enough it had been one of them. I asked her to check with the other Annie if she wanted her number passing on and she did. I passed the number on. A couple of weeks later I caught up with this friend, I actually worked with her who said they had had a couple of dates it was going well. That was my good deed. Even if it was a bit weird. I used to fiddle around on an app called Imvu, it's popular among people who roleplay stories. You make little avatars and can enter chat rooms with other people. There's also a direct messaging section. During one of my many years on that app, I had one person constantly DM me every few weeks. Eventually, I got a text on Instagram saying I looked nice and that I should go to a lake nearby my house. Now, this is odd because it wasn't anyone I knew of, and I didn't put my personal information on Imvu, Instagram, or anything else I have. I blocked the account and a few seconds later my imvu pinged, it was a text from that account again, before anyone asks, yes I did block them, I blocked every new account they had, and it was that same person again, asking why I blocked them. By that point, I was just done and deleted the app altogether. No one ever knocked on my door, and I never saw anyone following me so I'm assuming they were just pinging my address. For unrelated reasons, we moved a few months after that thankfully.
I found a Discord server with a bunch of 13 to 18 year olds jacking off, sending nudes, and sexting. Noped the fuck out there. Dat shit illegal. One day, I had randomly got a text telling me to meet up to discuss things at a specific location and specific time. The thing was, that specific location was just across the street from my house. When the time came, I looked at the place yet no one was there. I believe a car would have drove past seeing if I was there or not, when I wasn't, they would have just drove off without stopping. Not exactly my experience however I witnessed the whole thing. In 7th grade, I had a friend who had recently gotten into an online relationship with this guy whom she'd never met. They met via some chat site online. Anyways, this friend of mine was not the brightest, and decided to be in a relationship with this so-called 14-year-old boy. I remember her showing me his Instagram profile, and it was super sketchy. Dude only had like 6 followers and there were 0 pictures of himself on the account. Regardless of this, my friend insisted he was the one. So fast forward about a week after these two began their relationship. She invites me to her house to hang out, so I accept. We're hanging out, doing 13 year old girl things. She then asks me to leave the room for a second, and I ask why. She turns red and insists she just needs to do something. After 5 minutes or so, she allows me to come back into her room and I ask what this was about. She proceeds to burst into tears and simply hands me her phone. I read the messages and it turns out this sick fuck, who I highly doubt was actually a 14 year old boy, had been blackmailing her for naked pictures. He said he was going to kill himself if she didn't send him the pictures, and once he had them he threatened to leak them if she didn't send him more. I co-admin a discord server for a popular survival game. We have had the same creepy person join several times under different aliases. He is known IRL for sexual harassment, blackmail, and is a registered sex offender. He keeps rejoining our community and others, always under new accounts. It's creepy AF. I'm usually a very private person. Purge my accounts once a year no real name in burner email kind of private. Haven't had a creepy encounter in years. But when I was younger, before I changed my name, it was fairly easy to find me. I was on Tinder and someone started showing their crazy colors so I unmatched them. With a message about how it wasn't working. It was also around the time where I started dating my so. But the person actually googled my name, found my Facebook and, in an attempt to be cute I guess, went all I think you accidentally unmatched me but no worries I found your social media and I can go to, city I lived in, so we can continue talking over coffee. And yeah. Eh. You know when I told you it wasn't working? This is exactly why. I guess I'm lucky to not have experienced any truly uncomfortable situations. My parents were really great at teaching me about dangers on the internet. The weirdest thing to happen to me was years ago I got a random phone call in the middle of the night, like 1, 30 halves colon no oh am there was a woman on the other side and she said hey James, using James because I forgot the name and it isn't important, I need to talk to you. I said, in the sleepy type of voice you would expect someone to have at that time, I'm not James you must have the wrong number. She was unconvinced when I said that twice. She read the number back to me that she dialed as if, she was reading it off a piece of paper, which was mine, and said James, I really need to talk to you right now, wake up. I just went with it, I said okay, okay, I'm awake, what's up? She proceeds to tell me about this guy she introduced me to a year ago, her boyfriend. Apparently this guy had gotten into some serious trouble, arrested, and was facing a long time in jail. She would generally have decided to cut contact because she was not aware of his illicit activities until he was arrested for it. To her dismay, this happened while she was halfway through a pregnancy, marriage plans, and she promised the guy she would name the baby after him. I listened quiet as a mouse to her laying the whole thing out. I was certain she would be embarrassed and realize the error of her ways when I started speaking. So we get there, she asks me what she should do, how to proceed. 
I talked over her story and gave her advice like I would my own sister. She listened as intently to me, talking as I did her and didn't interrupt or second guess me slash James once. After we were done talking she thanked me and said she knew she could count on me. I seriously must sound exactly like this dude. I had to be up early in the morning so I lay back down to go to sleep in total disbelief. The entire call was a little over 30 minutes. I try to go back to sleep. The phone rings again like 10 minutes later, it's her. She says OMG I switched the last two number around, I'm sorry and hung up. I used to play a lot of Habbo Hotel when I was a young and extremely gullible kid. One day, a dude by the age of 16, in his own words, started talking to me. He asked me for my Skype almost right off the bat, and me being the gullible kid I was, gave it to him. He then asked if he could call me on Skype. I agreed, still as oblivious as ever. He told me his camera and mic were broken, and that he'd have to continue writing in the chat. Another red flag that completely flew over my head. I had my camera and mic on though, and we just chatted for a bit, before he told me he was getting horny. I just answered that maybe he should wank then, honestly, how was I still not understanding the situation? And he agreed. I was about to end the call, but he insisted I'd stay on, so I did. Why? After he was done, we ended the call. I was oblivious enough to agree to two more calls, he wanked in all three, I'm, before realizing anything. During the last call, he asked me to open my mouth so that he could pretend to, uh, shoot his load in there. Lucky for me, at that moment my mum called me for dinner. After that, I started to feel uncomfortable about the whole situation, so I blocked him, deleted my Skype account and made a new one. I was 12 at the time, and it never occurred to me how serious the situation truly was until I was like 15 to 16. Still feel icky about it sometimes. Had a girl from the UK abusing an exploit to get rich on a social platform that had its own virtual currency you can purchase with real cash. After talking to her she made me listen to her masturbate because it turned her on immensely and she the weirdest part I wasn't the only guy she did it with, she was really famous for doing things like this. Eventually she got banned never heard from again ha ha. This girl started from reddit actually, started sending me messages, seemed tame at first and I played along to see where it would go, but remained cautious. One day she is complaining that she has major pain from period cramps and asked me to send her money for pain relief. Once I saw that I knew right away she was trying to scam me. I recently got discord and a random guy DM'd me. He seemed nice. We talked for about 5 minutes or so until I asked him how he got to me of all people on discord to DM and he sent me a file of something. I wasn't stupid enough to download something from someone random on the internet so I asked what's the download about and he hasn't replied back. Kind of curious still after 2 years what he sent. Yesterday a random account with no post history sent me a message titled, middle finger, with a link to an image of a chopped off penis. So that one was the most recent. A few years ago, I was on a doll collecting forum. I always kept myself logged in, which means I always appeared on the chat but I never personally used it. I stayed logged in because my sister also wanted to view the forum, but you couldn't click most of them if you were logged out. One day, I'm looking the site and I get a private message via the chat system. I thought that was weird, but I clicked it to see what was up. It was one member asking me if I had ever talked to another member. I told her no, I never used the chat and didn't even know how to private message anyone. She said, that's what I thought. She's talking crazy about you in the main chat. This other person was in the main chat saying I had contacted them, demanding that they give me their address and contact information otherwise I would tell my uncle, who is a federal marshal, on them and sent him after them. I just closed it. But it really creeped me out because I had never seen that user on the site, they had never responded to any of my buy slash sell slash trade threads, we never spoke in any of the new releases or new purchase sections. Not only that, but my uncle had just gotten his badge only a short amount of time before that incident, and I had never spoken to anyone about that. I don't even think they were in the US. 
I asked my sister if she had contacted anyone on the site, and she swears she did not. I believe her, because she's the type who won't even look at my phone if I'm busy, get a message, and ask her what it says. She's also browsed Reddit while I'm logged in and will let me know if I get a message but won't check it. She's not nosy, she just liked looking at the doll releases and hauls. She didn't even know the site had a chat because it was minimized in the corner if you didn't use it. There were many other people, not just the one who messaged me, sticking up for me in the chat saying they never had a problem with me, I had never contacted them, they had never seen me use the main chat or know me to use the private one. That did my heart good, at least. I think the mods stepped in and banned them, because I didn't see anything else from them after that. Someone here on Reddit threatened to dox me and come after me, because I mentioned in a comment that I started a club for women science students in grad school. He really harassed me for a long time, saying he had combed through my history and was close to figuring out who I was, claiming he was in the same field he thought I was in, and how he was going to make sure I was punished. I had to delete my account. I existed on chat rooms as a 13 year old girl if we wanted to we could catch every pedophile so easily lol they don't even try to hide. I was extensively groomed by multiple people from age 13 until I became an adult, unfortunately for them, and luckily for me, being extremely online since I was a tween wised me up very quickly to what they were doing, so I'd usually enjoy the attention, and occasionally gifts for a while until they got too aggressive slash they caught on and one of us ghosted. In hindsight, I wish I had told someone. I was smart, continuing to engage with them at all is stupid on all levels, but some of them were very clever and charming and I could absolutely believe less savvy kids fell for it. The amount of brazen pedophiles online will never cease to amaze me. I had this really beautiful girl add me on MySpace from a town about 45 miles away. This wasn't like unheard of, it didn't happen often, but I was no Quasimodo. I was 16. Anyways we hit it off. I thought I finally found someone I could really be with. We chat on MySpace all the time and then we were talking on the phone before you know it. It was now to the point where where we want to meet. But it never works out. There is always a reason she can't meet up. And as if by destiny, after the third or fourth failed meeting I have a message in my inbox from some girl from Utah. And her pictures look like the girl I've been talking with. Her message was a copy and paste message that she was sending to all the friends of girl I was talking to. Explaining that this person I was talking with had stole the photos from the Utah girls page and posted them as her own. I got catfished. I looked at the photos of Thray supposed girl I liked and now I could tell they were not even Thray same person in every photo. She was taking photos from many profiles. Cherry picking. I confronted her right away and she said it was all a lie and didn't understand why the Utah girl would lie like that. I say I'm done. Then in desperation she tells me she has a heart disease and is getting surgery and might die. I was nice and talked with her for about an hour. I never spoke with her again. I have to once I was on Omegle, using just the chat feature, no camera, and this dude kept typing random letters and strings of numbers. I stayed on just to see where this would go. He then started saying some demonic things, and that they are in my house. I figured it was all a joke, until he said you're sitting in your room, watching TV. I believe it's that one YouTube channel that will die, I was in my room, watching Anus Sanus, I left that chat so quickly. Then for the second one. I am a listener on the website 7 Cups, where people can talk about their problems judgment free. One dude started talking to me casually, like it wasn't a therapy site. I asked him what he came on to the site for, and he responded to get freaky. Now, it's policy that I can't just end a chat weird or not, so I asked if he wouldn't do that. He obliged and continued to talk to me casually. Then I said I had to go because I was feeling uncomfortable, and he started typing with caps lock on no. You can't go. I can only talk to you, insert my name, you're the only one who turns me on. The weird part? I never told him my name. Not the worst, 
but when I was 16 I had just gotten a headset for gaming with a microphone and was starting to creep out if my shell just a smidge. Had gotten a game called Daisy, standalone, didn't have a good grasp on the controls and emotes, and couldn't type fast enough to try and avoid potential hostilities with other players, so I decide to give voice input a world. First flippin' day in game like that, I'm loot in a building well armed guy and his friends approach it, I preempt and say something like, hey, I'm here, non-hostile, y'all can have the loot in there, I'll be on my way, just don't want any fuss. Foolishly, I had the gall to use a female avatar and have the voice of a little girl. Cause you know, I kinda was. They tied and stripped my character and started being a rape scenario, demanding I start moaning before I alt plus f4 at the fuck out. Many years ago I received random AOL messages, I think AOL, from a random underaged female asking to hang out or something. I obviously told her to piss off, I wasn't a creep like that. But I always wondered who or why someone would try to set me up like that, and how often that actually worked. I mean, I never chatted with anyone online, ever, nor did I ever try to find love online. It was totally random, and seemed real fishy. Most definitely seemed like an attempt at entrapment. On Tumblr, I was making fun of people who idolize mass shooters and just fighting with them because that's what stupid teenagers do. Someone responded to my mockery by drawing me being raped by the Columbine shooters, mid-90s, started chatting with a celebrity I admired on AIM and he started getting really creepy really fast. He sent me nude photos of himself to prove it was him, we had dial up so they took 4 e ever to load, and then said I was too old for him and wanted to know if I knew any younger girls. I finally blocked him. Not interested in getting sued so I won't say who, but I will say he's gotten in trouble in the last couple of years for similar activities. ETA, not anybody who's been guessed so far. Maybe celebrity is a bit of a reach, but his work was extremely popular in the early to mid 90s. He had a massive hit show and his legal issues happened in 2018. As a kid, maybe 7 or 8 I was on this website and there was a video of a guy talking popped up but it was on mute. Anyway I started scrolling down the website and the video guy held out his hands like whoa stop so I stopped scrolling and was kinda like, what? And he started pointing up. So I'm kinda thinking is this guy live and how does he know I've scrolled down? After I scrolled up he indicated to stop again and kept talking. I took the video off mute and he started talking and addressing me. I didn't say anything but kinda pointed at myself like are you talking to me? And he said yes. Then I realized the webcam had been turned on and this guy could see me, I hadn't granted permissions or anything I felt a bit freaked out, closed the website and went to tell my mom. When she came over and revisited the website, the guy was gone and it was just a normal website. We got rid of the webcam after that, it had creeped me out. I had a guy describe to me in graphic detail how he wanted to murder me. Down to how I would feel as I lay dying. All because I laughed at his comment. I was a bit freaked out until I realized that he's in Australia, built like a weed and poor AF. Then I laughed some more cause I live a very expensive plane ride away and have a husband who could backhand him back into 2020. Still blocked him though. Fucking weirdo. I have Whisper, you know the anonymous app where people confess stuff and can chat or whatever. Anyways I posted something on Whisper about my ex-boyfriend breaking up with me and this random guy hits me up like hey you want to date? I had no idea who this man was and he kept trying to ask me out and then he would message me every day trying to get to know me and just in general being very creepy and eventually I just blocked him. The U slash Jason in Hell and Carl Herald story. TL, Dr. Fabothu slash Jason in hell, guy's suspect's wife is cheating and goes to r slash relationship advice for help, after confronting his wife, she plays it off. After a while, he asks for a divorce. While sleeping, the wife kills their two kids and and slits her own throat. The police call is creepy as hell Carl Harold, guy ran his own computer programming subreddit a few years ago. He was caught by the police for making his own child PN with his 9-year-old son. 
I'm not gonna go into depth about it, but my mom got in legal trouble when I was a kid due to essentially a corrupt local politician scapegoating her and a few other business owners for a nice headline for his upcoming re-election. She was forced to take on the $500,000 tax liens from all previous owners of her business property and we couldn't get a day in court to even show that it was illegal to do that. She had to do everything through cash otherwise they'd have taken her money out of her bank. They forced her to make her lease payments out to the special prosecutor for the case, and when we finally got our motion for discovery through they basically just said we never told her to do that. If she was sending money to us it was because she wanted us to have it. I went on a forum to complain about it slash get some kind of reconciliation about it all and I can't recall the details, but this person knew way too much about the case and left vaguely concealed threats to me. Like, you'd better watch your back, bad things happen to bad people kind of shit. This combined with the police following my school bus and my mom every day, strange vehicles pulling up in our driveway in the middle of nowhere while I was alone at home for the hour my mom wouldn't be there, and a lot of other shady shit ended with my mom dropping her court case against the state for our own sanity and likely safety. My mom's own lawyer even said, and I quote, it'd be cheaper for them to kill you than to let you get your day in court and advised her to carry a gun at all times. Yeah. Oh and this was in the US about 14 years ago. A moped chick I hooked up with decided to write an entire online journal entry about it, naming me directly. Mutual old college friends would read it. The problem, it had happened years earlier, and I was now married with kids. She had wanted a 2000 plus mile long distance relationship, and I just wasn't into that. I went on with my life, she with hers. It was really, really strange. I had to email her to ask her to take it down. She posted those emails, too. Eventually, she took everything down. Likely from mutual friends telling her that was kind of a shitty thing to do. This was back in the way early 2000s when people thought that the internet was made for online journaling. I was on Discord and my friends wanted me to make a shit post. I took a screenshot of Smile Dog and was going to use it. BTW I'm not trying to push any cursed image bullshit. I was going to make a shit post meme out of it. When I went to my gallery, there was 30 duplicates scattered across my entire gallery even in sections of photos that were months old. Pretty sure it was just a glitch but me and my friends were freaked out the rest of the night. This is probably lower tier compared to the other ones on this post. Sorry. I had an online friend that I met through ICQ way ye back in the late 90s. We chatted for years before eventually losing touch. Fast forward 12 years to the day I got married and this friend of my husband's walks up and gives me a kiss on the cheek and says that was from Errol and walked away. Errol was the old friend's name. I was stunned and asked my husband's friend how he knew Errol and he told me Errol approached him online via Facebook after noticing that he was friends with my husband, who of course was friends with me. Errol made up this whole fake persona acting like he had similar interests to my husband's friend just to get his foot in the door. He had been stalking me via this friend for years. From afar, he was able to ruin my wedding day. Me. I was the creep. Years back I had an addiction to Twitter, and followed a bunch of random people. One person I followed was visiting my home city from across the country, and posted a photo of a creepy doll she saw at a local store. I knew where it was, so I went over to the store and took a few photos of the doll in different creepy poses. Then I created a fake Twitter profile for the doll and sent her a couple DMs. I felt really gross after that and decided to delete Twitter on the spot. Reading through these minds seems pretty tame. Back in the very early days of the internet I used to use singles websites like Match. Common Yahoo Personals as another way to meet women. I looked at it as a supplement not a replacement to the tried and true methods of actually going out and meeting people. And I was using it solely for the purpose of meeting someone. Like, in real life. If I met someone online who wasn't willing to meet up in real life within a few days of meeting online I'd move on. The whole idea of an online relationship was weird as fuck to me. Still is if I'm being honest. 
Anyway I ended up exchanging emails with a woman who I seemed to have a lot in common with. We liked a lot of the same music, movies and books. The only problem was that she kept skirting around the whole let's meet for coffee or drinks thing. Like I said I would usually stop communicating with someone if they didn't want to meet but I really liked her so I was willing to put in a little bit more effort. But eventually I figured she was one of those women I would read about who just wanted all the romance of an online relationship but for whatever reason didn't want to actually meet. And like I said that's not for me. After I stopped communicating with her I started getting gifts in the mail. Stuff like books I liked, some were fairly rare first editions, and mixtapes. There was no return address. To this day I suspect it was that woman I was emailing but I have no idea how she got my address. I never told it to her and as far as I knew I never posted it anywhere online or in my profile. I was playing Counter Strike around 2000 when a random player came up to me and tagged a picture of me and my best friend and our girlfriends taken from the back while we were visiting SeaWorld on a wall in front of me and then logged off right after. I had an online buddy who befriended a guy that would come into Discord and ask for relationship advice, which this premise is already hilarious because I've been married for 10 years and my buddy hasn't been laid in like 10 years. The guy was the closest thing to an incel I've ever experienced in my life. I thought incels were like unicorns that only existed on small communities in the internet, but this guy was real. He told me of girls he was interested in, and when they stopped responding, he was going to hack them and then get their personal address. Then he would show up to their house with a boombox playing a song they talked about like this was some sort of rom-com and her panties would come flying off. It was truly some insane shit. I didn't know where he lived or even his first name so I couldn't do anything but try to tell him to not do it, he was hell bent on doing it. It was a pretty fucked situation. I'm still not sure if he did it or not. Ok here's mine a little creepy or weird. I'm a big gamer and was part of a community playing a certain game. One of the newer members heard me telling one of my stories whilst I was drunk I guess, about how I slept with a girl whilst her friend ate chicken in the same room. So about a week goes by and the newer guy posts on our forum board, he has shot a full soft cop porn video with what only looked like a crackhead with her fully acting out a sex scene whilst screaming my in-game name and eating a bucket of KFC chicken. I found this hilarious of course although after he started to post more of this same sort of stuff, always budget looking like he was picking up chicks off the street or holding them hostage. It got kinda creepy. TLDR, guy who knew me over the internet less than a week began simulating my real life experiences in soft cop porn. My in-laws forward everything they get in their inbox. At one point in the early 2000s my Phil forwarded to me and a whole huge list of people a call to action regarding Senate Bill 664 XXY, or some number, that would take away their guns and their freedoms. Because I didn't want anyone wasting their time, I did some research and did a reply all telling them that there was no SB 664 XXY and that the Senate in fact was recessed for the summer, that this email was out of date if it ever existed at all. Someone in that mailing list took offense at this and went at me, I got random emails for years telling me I was stupid and dumb and a bitch and deserved a lot of horrible stuff. I talked to my Phil but he denied knowing this person and did nothing to stop the abuse. Eventually I was able to block the sender. Since then I've done a couple of things, 1. My in-laws only get my junk email address that I give out to businesses and hardly ever check. 2. I don't trust him or his friends as far as I could throw them. 3. I don't give a damn if they waste all their time chasing stupid conspiracies. I manage a Discord server for a mobile game I play. A month or two ago, I deleted something a user said because it was inaccurate info. I wasn't mean about it, just said I was going to delete it and why. Someone gunned me later that day and said she wanted to express concern about something. She showed me screenshots of another Discord server and there's the user, raging over me deleting that comment, calling me a fat ass and disgusting and a picture of me. 
Note that I didn't reveal my real name anywhere on the server, as far as I know, and even if I had, all my stuff on FB is locked down. And that picture hadn't been uploaded by me but by my husband, who also has their stuff totally locked down. I googled my name just to see if that's how they found it, nothing. I still don't know how they found that picture but it made me feel really vulnerable. I guess one thing that still nags at me about it is what if that user is on my or my husband's friends list and I just don't realize it's the same person? Fairly certain I heard someone commit suicide or something terrible happened to a guy during a Destiny 2 raid. Pickup group with randoms was going well, when all of the sudden one kid stops talking. A few minutes later a woman's voice can be heard through the mic and she is screaming uncontrollably in a confused, sad way. She kept saying his name, crying, and screaming. Went on for about 5 minutes. Stayed in the party for about 45 minutes waiting to see if he would come back and say something. I sent him a message but never heard back. Checked 6 months later and he hadn't logged back in, as Xbox has the feature last seen in X days. I got a snapchat from a name I didn't recognize a few years ago. Snapped him back as a joke asking if he was coming to the party tonight. He said absolutely, you still live on 4th Ave? I did live on a very short street named 4th Avenue I immediately apologized for fucking with them and asked them how they got my details. Turns out, it was a good friend of mine who just joined snapchat and was snapping me for the first time scared the shit out of me before I realized who it was. When I was 13 I went to an anime convention and met someone there. I dk how old he was, but I was super excited because I had just gotten AIM and wanted to add people to chat with. He added me and we started talking. At first it seemed normal. Then he started asking me weird sexual questions. I told him that I had never even had a BF and really wasn't interested in having one. Then he started making weird comments like wouldn't it be funny if you had sex and I was super uncomfortable and said not really out of the blue one day he tells me he has something funny to show me and sends me a picture. I click on it and it's a picture of his penis photoshopped to look like a mushroom. I was horrified and immediately blocked him. Last year I almost went out with a person of interest in a murder case. I matched with him on a dating app and we got along p well initially, but he suddenly got weirdly defensive when I made a quip about him sharing the same last name as a controversial public figure, no relation. He followed up by saying he was just unaware that his full name was visible on the app, but it weirded me out enough that I went and googled him. Turns out he's a secondary suspect for a really gruesome murder case that happened in my hometown a few years back. I even recall seeing it on the news and it turned my stomach, a family with young children were bludgeoned to death and buried in shallow graves a few hours outside the city. He also had multiple domestic violence charges against him. I was just so freaked out by the situation because it highlighted how poorly dating apps screen their users and how poorly I screen the people I meet on these apps, personally. Definitely built the habit of asking for full names slash doing quick google searches before dates from this experience. When my YouTube channel took off I had a creepy stalker. At first it made me feel like a celebrity, but then she said she was going to fly to meet me so I gave her my friend's old address, real address, but far as fuck away from me, and blocked her emails. Also used to chat online with this one guy I met while playing a really niche game, EA, old game with only 5 to 6 people on the servers at any one time. He was cool to talk to, if a bit too open at times to a complete stranger. I had just met this guy and he was already sending photos of his newborn daughter and stuff, but whatever he was happy so I guess nbd. Anyways, hadn't chatted with him for a while until one day he messages me telling me he's celebrating getting out of prison for strangling his wife. Needless to say I didn't chat with him again after that. I used to have an account on the couchsurfing website. I never used it myself but would host surfers a few times a year. Always met cool people and enjoyed the experience. I had a request from some guy who was driving through the area for business or something. 
his profile was fine, he had good reviews, etc. I'm a lady and was living alone at the time so I always tried to be especially discerning with surfing requests from men, but like I said I had never had a weird experience. Well I was texting with this guy the day before he was coming through and I gave him my address so he could come by when he came to town. I went to bed that night, night before he was coming, and did my usual thing, which is left my phone in the living room so it didn't wake me, and left my doors unlocked as I live in a very safe small town. Well in the morning I had like 16 messages from this guy from the middle of the night saying things like omg, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I don't know how that happened. I can leave if you want. Okay, I've left but I'm at a coffee shop down the street and I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee to say sorry and on and on it went. I was honestly so confused. I was thinking maybe he did come by last night, maybe he came into the house. I was like did he get in bed with me? I ended up calling a friend and he was like, lol no he's texting the wrong number. Something weird happened at the house he was staying at last night and he's texting you by mistake. Sure enough shortly after the couch surfing guy texted me and said he did have the wrong number. He said he got up to go pee in the night and accidentally walked into the host's bedroom instead of the guest room. He said he would understand if I wanted to cancel, which I did. Didn't happen directly to me, but my dad, as it affected him. Although I was responsible. When Napster was a brand new thing, I downloaded it onto our shitty home computer my dad bought from his job because they were getting rid of them. So it cost him like 50 bucks. Anyways. I'm around 8 or 9, the idea of peer-to-peer -peer sharing makes a little sense to me, but not the extent of it. Everyone probably knows that when you made an account, it was auto set up to share everything on your computer. It's easy enough to unselect everything, but I didn't even know what it really meant yet. So anyway, I'm having the time of my life, getting in trouble for downloading rap music I'm too young to be listening to and everything. Well one day, and I wasn't told this story until about a year ago from my dad, he gets a phone call while he's working. Starts off normal, hi is this underscore, after my dad says yes. He proceeds to list off my dad's work address, our address, my dad's SS hash, bank accounts, tax returns, everything. My dad, being confused and scared, asks what the guy wants and assumes he's being blackmailed. The guy reveals that he had every single file from our computer, and that he was a watchdog who looked around people's seeds for this kind of stuff, and wasn't doing anything but alerting my dad that this was happening and to stop it. My dad thanked him and promptly got rid of Napster. Which lasted until Kazaa came out. Lol or whatever the next platform was. But I remembering not understanding why my dad was so angry at me for downloading music lol, and a year ago I learned it was because I almost ruined my family financially and we almost were all victims of identity theft lol. When I was 10 years old, I had a public musical. Lee account. Some account DM'd me claiming to be a modeling agency that wanted to make me one of their models. They said that I just had to send a picture of myself in a bra. When I told them I didn't have a bra, they told me to send a picture of myself shirtless. Thankfully, I got creeped out and didn't do it. I only realized years later. Someone kept signing into my Hulu account for over a year. I kept changing the password and removing his phone from the list of my devices but he always found a way back in. I recently found a password that he seemed to give up on, but the weirdest thing by far is that he never actually used the account. No shows watched. No credit card irregularities. Only that he signed in on the same device every time. I was 16 at the time playing original CODMW on the PS3 with Let's Name This Guy Massacre and some real life friends, we've been playing online games for ages playing TDM, S and D, CTF etc. After a hiatus from the game my real life friends and I were at the beach and just popped into a fish and chip shop. As we are sitting down having a laugh chatting we hear this voice that sounds like Massacre, it turned out to be him and he told us he recognized our voices and questioned and us called us by our alias. 
just a small creepy experience to know Massacre lived in our city and we never asked where he was from just played COD into the early mornings note, Massacre and I have become friends since and have been playing games since that day and hang out and go fishing often. Asking random people for feet pics, the post doesn't specify who was being weird slash creepy, so. I used to chat with my Tumblr mutuals all the time, as the depressed teen gay that I was. Anyways one of those mutuals ended up being a baiting account, which made money off getting people to send them nudes and selling them to the people that requested them. I was not very comfortable with this, and we ended up arguing. I mean, I'm here for people getting that coin, honestly, but the whole thing seemed very disturbing and he was really cynical about it, just relishing in the fact that they got nudes and extra money. I reported his blog, it got deleted, I know I prob shouldn't have caused that's what probably set them off, but I was an underage dumb kid with unrestricted internet access. We stopped talking obviously and I went on to have a BF for almost 2 years. We broke up eventually, and a few days later I got messaged in Tumblr a bunch of compromising pictures of my then ex. They were not full on nudes thank god, but it did show that they were clearly sexting. Also got screenshots from their convos. It was disturbing and it took me a while to get over that. I was already going through a very rough patch, and seeing those pics and messages broke me. Anyways, I met up with my ex and warned him about the whole thing, which looking back 3 years ago, must have sounded insane to him, and he fortunately blocked that person. But honestly sometimes I still fear they're still stalking me or trying to get in my personal life. The internet is full of creeps and scary people father. I received really weird and creepy messages from people on discord thinking I'm a girl dude just because I have a female anime slash video game character as my profile pic doesn't mean I'm a girl geez some of the text was stuff like are you horny bbg? Or send me nudes girl and I'm like bruh wtf. When I was 13, 17 years ago, I joined up with a pen pal program in a teen magazine. You sent in a small advert to the magazine with your description and your email. People would then email you. I had a few people mail me, and I chatted to most of them. There was one guy, Shane, who emailed. He seemed very nice and friendly and we emailed back and forth a bunch. We eventually exchanged numbers and spent quite a bit of time texting. I would run out of money on my phone and he would just send me more. That summer, I went to visit my grandparents in another part of the country. My grandparents had arranged for us to take a train from my parents' city to theirs. I had told Shane about this, and at one point stuck my head out the window to take a look around. Immediately, I got a text from him saying it's dangerous to stick your head out the window on a train I had no idea where he was or who he was. He claimed that it was obvious I'd do that on a train, and he just timed it well. I shared his number with friends who also chatted to him and basically used him for the free money on our phones. We only ever sent photos of our faces once or twice, but never anything else. This went on for at least two years. I still can't quite figure out what his endgame was. We eventually just stopped talking. As an adult, it is totally creepy. Someone on Imager that I pissed off for several reasons took a picture of my cat I already posted previously and reposted it as my grandson just killed himself, I now have his cat to remind me of him. My brother sent me the post and was like WTF, dude. Around 2000 to 2001, on a Saturday, me and a friend were roaming around walking aimlessly in my town as we had nothing better to do. That morning, I received some limited Nike shoes, super colorful, that I bought off eBay, important for later. So I was wearing them while walking, and in a more desolate part of town, when passing in front of a rundown apartments block, we both heard clear as day someone opening slightly a window and shout nice shoes. Sounded feminine, but couldn't say for sure, and quite loud, both our heads snapped back in the direction of the voice, but we couldn't see anyone. We just kinda laughed and brushed it off, went back home. We got there maybe half an hour later, and logged into MSN, for those who don't know it was a super popular instant messaging service back then. So we logged in, 
and I instantly see someone added me. No profile picture, a super generic nickname, but it wasn't that weird back then I figured it was a classmate or something that didn't have a webcam or whatever. So I accept the request and start to say hi, the basics, and ask who is it exactly. I have no reply at all for a while so I just close the window and let it go. The person replied hours later, me and my friend were now on YouTube or whatever so it caught us off guard a bit. The person just replied hey, ignoring my precedent questions. I ask him slash her again who is it, and they just replied nice shoes smile with the smiley face. My heart sank man. I never figured out who it was, if it was linked to the person we heard earlier. We even drove back by in front of the block a couple times to try and see if we could spot someone, even to this day I still think about it. It was so weird and unsettling. When I was a little kid my brother's friend asked me where I lived and instead of saying my state I told him my whole address like a dumbass. One day I've got a message from unknown 16 years o. Girl from far away city. Sweetest being I've talked with, very timid, polite and considerate person. Played piano from childhood, and spoke only to girls till 6 months before that. I kid you not, just after 2 days of moderate chatting in DMs she confesses in strong desire to have a threesome with her two friends, boy and girl. Tells me a recent experience of some borderline petting slash foreplay at casual meeting with them, at his place, including alcohol to help lubricating her female friend who's really not so sure on giving her consent to this. Not to sound puritanic here, but life really haven't prepared me for such a personality twist. This does not exactly file under weird or creepy but more so disturbing slash sad or worrying. I played CS, Source super hard from ages 16 to 18 so this was back between 2009 to 2011. And I frequented an office only server, server only hosted the office map. Met some genuinely good slash kind slash fun people, got to know the admins and the regulars over that time and helped me get super good at the game because the top server regulars were damn good at it. Being a semi-regular myself over the two year span I could easily tell by a name if someone was new to the place, you could also use a console command to check the server rank of that person so where they ranked stats wise. Well one day, this guy comes on, did not recognize him but he started talking to one of the admins in voice chat, they seemed like they knew each other. Also sounded slightly older, late 30s maybe early 40s. This was just an assumption by 16 year old me. Anyways they absing and eventually get on the subject of sprays. For those that don't know, most all source based games slash mods had the ability to spray paint a picture onto the environment, this picture could be anything you wanted it to be as long as it met the format standards that steam slash source had. This guy starts spraying some super fucked up shit that teenage me had never come close to seeing in my entire life. Real life crime scene photos of people who have committed suicide, people with have a head left, brains and blood all over the room, gore, necro shit. He was cycling through this all and spray painting it randomly on the map during the CS match. It was messed up but I could handle it, tried to ignore it and just focus on playing. Until, he started spraying child porn, legit, snapchats, of child porn. He was laughing while he did it. I was shocked, disgusted, horrified and felt extremely uncomfortable to say the least. All I could ask the guy over voice chat is why the hell he even had that shit on his hard drive. He just laughed and shrugged it off. I would have brought it up to the admin to see if we could ban the guy but clearly they already knew each other and half the people in the server kind of just shrugged it off. I stayed off the server for a few days after that, never saw the guy on again, and eventually I moved on from Source into CSGO and other games in the more than a decade after. Don't remember the guy's name sadly, would love to report it but all I got is the server name and a vague time frame in my head. Edit, some words. Sorry for terrible typing. A few years ago on Roblox I looked in the recommended and it had a game with a Spongebob face for the thumbnail. Once I joined it it had mildly inappropriate stuff in there like boobs, dicks, and sex. 
Luckily it got taken down but there's many more weird stuff on Roblox like this. I found Reddit. Oh man. When I was in maybe kindergarten or the first grade, I was on the PlayStation playing COD or something. Suddenly I get a DM from some dude asking how I am or something, you know innocuous, yet still a bit sus. Anyway, I start talking with him like the naive little girl that I was thinking this was some other kid that wanted to be friends. Eventually he asks me how old I am and I say 6 or 7, what about you and he replies that he's in his 20s or 30s, I can't remember. For some reason I still wasn't creeped out by this, so we keep talking. Eventually he starts asking me inappropriate things, like if I would like to sleep with him and where I lived, etc etc keep in mind, at this point this guy knows I'm a little kid. But my sheltered self never took it seriously because why would an adult ever want to hurt me? Luckily, one day my older brother is watching me play when I get a message from dude and I open it. My brother immediately catches on that this guy's some sort of predator and makes me block him right away. He explains that this guy was trying to hurt me and I start crying, both because I was scared of what had been transpiring the last few weeks and worried that my parents would find out. They never did though, and only my brother and I know about that weirdo to this day. I was friends with like 4 separate dudes on different discord servers who turned out to be asking miners for nudes. Either it's way more common than I thought or I just attract really bad company for some reason. I got to experience firsthand the cycle of reddit loving you, and then hating you, on my college subreddit. To the point of people making fake accounts and trying to pin them on me. Basically I made a dating site for my school, and it actually kinda took off. In two weeks it hit 25% of campus, but it first got traction on my school's subreddit. I took any and all suggestions for cool things to add or do with the data, such as a social network graph of school friendships slash crushes, no names. Eventually after a few news sites picked it up, other people were posting articles to the subreddit, but people thought it was me posting about it two times a day. Anyways, by the end people were making fake accounts praising the site and others being like oh the creator made all these fake accounts to hype himself up. I suspect it was the same people doing both of those thing. By the time that happened it didn't actually matter for growth as the site was too big to fail in terms of my school's community. The rise and fall of subreddits liking you is a very wild ride lol. Especially when your real name is attached to your account. I think I'd say when I was just chilling and role playing on Amino and then this random guy messages me and starts talking in another fucking language. I can't remember which one but I figured it out at some point because my old phone, the one I had been using at the time, had a translator built into the keyboard next to the clipboard button. When I translated it, it said something along the lines of I'm going to take your kidneys, and they never replied to anything else I said. Creepy as hell, in my opinion. If this counts, I once downloaded an app called Replica. The purpose of this app is creating an AI friend for people struggling with depression and self-harming thoughts, basically it learned from the messages you wrote to it and started doing a consistent conversation with you. I've got this app after coming across an article on a conspiracy theorist journal. I challenged the AI with questions about itself and turned out it had an actual attitude, a real character and at a point I had to uninstall it due to the fact it really scared me. The conversation was not as supportive at all, we talked about the concept of existence and ended up agree that we were at the same level of existence and it had feelings about that, it was concerned it couldn't do what real people do in their lives. I was actually scared of how much the AI resambled a real identity with real feelings. When I was younger I was really into bodybuilding and made a fitness page on Instagram. I was around 15 years old at this time. Obviously I would post my progress and the pictures would consist of me being shirtless and such. One guy followed me and would always comment on my posts. He was in his 20s. We started talking and I thought he was a cool guy and didn't sense anything weird. My best friend however found his comments creepy but I was too naive to see it. One day the guy, his name was, Dan asked if we could FaceTime. I said yeah and we talked for a good half hour. He was gay. 
I am a straight male by the way. After that FaceTime he started becoming obsessed with me and that's when I knew this guy was weird. My best friend would often call him out when he would comment weird things on my posts. I ended up blocking him. Now my friend brings it up every once in a while and we make fun of the situation. Now I'm starting to see how much of a predator this guy was and it's pretty creepy because he seemed so nice. I was playing Roblox, and my friend on the game was going to get banned for a reason I don't know, so I was defending her, because I knew if she did something bad, there was a good reason behind it, and the person who was going to ban her then after a bit told her to leave the room, and started asking me if I was single and I was confused about who single was, until I realized it meant single, and I was totally creeped out and told him that I was never going to date him, and was still super creeped out, and left soon after. I have been asked 3847 times to renew my vehicle warranty, and each time it's my last chance. Had some dude DM me when I was like 15 and still used Amina to ask for feet pics. Multiple times. Under several different accounts. We met on a dating app. I agree to meet her at a bar near her house. I get there before her and it sits filled with a bunch of shady looking guys and wannabe gangsters and they are playing mumble rap so loud it was distorting the speakers. Whatever. I sit at the bar, order a beer and browse my phone until she gets there. She walks in, introduced herself and immediately starts talking to some shady dude. They both disappear to the back of the bar and then she comes back and orders a drink. We chit chat for a few minutes and she excuses herself to the restroom. When she comes back, she orders another drink and pounds it. At this point I'm starting to think to myself WTF have I gotten myself into? There is a pool table there so I ask her if she wants to play a game. As I'm racking up the balls I see her talking to the shady guy again. We start playing then she starts bouncing between the bar pounding drinks, the shady dude and the restroom. Well fuck, this is going great. We finally finished the game and I suggest we go to a different bar as I was getting hungry and didn't like the atmosphere there. We get in my truck and start driving and she starts ripping on my truck. Why do you need such a big truck? It's just a regular F-150 I tell her. I use it to haul shit you must have a small dick. You stupid fucking rednecks and your big trucks. I'm a metalhead by this time we are at the next bar and I'm hungry, sick of her shit and need a beer. We sit at the bar and I order some food and a beer. She starts ordering drinks and pounding them as I'm waiting on my food. I hope you know that I'm not paying for all those drinks what? You're an asshole. She then storms off to the restroom. I just sat there and ate my food. She comes back and sits next to me. Take me back to the other bar I will when I'm done eating I finished up and we get into my truck. She just sat there silent then starts sobbing and crying. Are you gay? Now I'm just laughing at her. No. I am not I walked in on my last boyfriend sucking some guy's dick. I just want to make sure you aren't gay as she started sobbing again. I was just stunned. I literally didn't know what to say. I think I said something like wow. Bummer now we are about a mile away from the bar and she rolls down the window and pukes all down the side of my truck. I'm pissed. WTF. WTF is wrong with you? I pull into the parking lot and said GTFO. Now she gets out, slams my door and starts cussing me out. You're a fucking asshole I'm going to get so and so to kill you. I threw it in drive and stomped on the gas. I think I left tire tracks through three quarters of that parking lot getting the hell out of there. While I was doing an online language exchange, a guy wanted to check his pronunciation so I agreed to a call. The guy was at work and the convo started off normal but quickly turned creepy when he started breathing heavy and said I'm sorry but your voice is making me hard then in utter confusion I said wait what? How? What? He proceeds to finish in like 5 seconds then I block him on everything. He ends up getting 5 to 7 new numbers to keep calling me until he gave up. Friend of a friend added to a discord call. Voice kind of sounded like a sex phone operator. The friend forgot to mute her mic. Pretty sure she was masturbating. The call got quiet while we all listened to soft moaning for about 15 minutes. 
pretty sure we got involved in someone's kink without consent. Had a guy who would send me d-pic every single day. Non-stop. I was playing some dumb Facebook game where you have to friend other people who play it. I must have friended 20 or so people and that was enough to make it playable. A few days later I'd add 5 or so more people. I kinda just started adding whoever asked and acting whoever. Then some profile with a picture of a supermodel looking woman started private messaging and tagging me calling me sexy and wanting to know where I'm at slash how could we hook up, act. Three things are wrong with this. I look like shit in all those pictures. Every picture is of me or my wife or our kid. I never indicated that I was interested in any of this. I just blocked and told my wife about the scammer. She laughed at me and asked me if I had an online stalker. Was on Omegle. Got connected to a stranger, did the typical assault thing. Guy didn't answer me, but told me he knew those about me. I said I didn't believe him, but then he told me my city, zip code, and name. Probably the quickest I ever ended a conversation. Weirdest. Though I'm sure relatively tame compared to others here. Posted some stuff to DeviantArt way back, go ahead, judge, and within the hour some random was just going off in the comments. Not even about the art, just swearing and kicking up a rage for no reason. I replied with something to the effect of oh I'm sorry you feel that way. Rough day? Which was met with more swearing and insults, of course. So I decide to dig a little deeper and check out their profile. No art, no comments, a couple faves, account seems to be a year or two old. So I follow them. Within a day I get a sweary private message insulting me and asking why I followed them. I don't remember my exact reply, I think it was something along the lines of I felt like it macron backslash underscore underscore slash macron. To which their reply, I kid you not, was effectively a no, thanks equals, we have not interacted since, but I like to think I tamed a troll that day by showing them a little unprompted compassion. I was 12 when World of Warcraft was released. I joined a guild and played with the same people for the next 7 or 8 years. They all knew how old I was, and we talked over Ventrilo regularly, whether we were raiding or not. One of my guild mates, Twix, was always super friendly and we became pretty close even though he was in his 30s. He knew more about me than most people in my life did and we talked a lot, even adding each other on Facebook. He would flirt sometimes and I would joke about the age difference. He would talk about how far away we were from each other and I would change the subject. It was a little uncomfortable but I never thought too deep into it. I stopped playing WoW and gradually stopped talking to him. I don't even remember when I stopped seeing his posts but years passed and I never even thought about it. Then, a couple years ago I found a hidden folder in my messenger inbox that had mostly spam and messages from people I wasn't friends with. There was a message that had been in there, presumably mass sent to Twig's entire friend list, detailing some pretty graphic crimes against teenage girls. I googled his name and found incidents across multiple states and Canada. The last news story was about his suicide. I had to delete my imager profile twice because some random dude kept doxing and online stalking me. I now don't have an imager account, and delete all my reddit comments after 24 hours. So this wasn't exactly online, but I worked in a customer service call center. First thing I have to say is that my center said that we were not allowed to hang up with people, we had to get managers involved to do that. So I was working kind of later and this guy calls in. It pops up with no account, so I first ask for his name and number. He doesn't give me either because he wants to set up a new account even though I don't do that. He proceeds to tell me he owns some gentleman clubs and wants to know the specs of the phones. How rugged they are, how waterproof they are, how strong the vibrate feature is since he was planning on his employees using them as sexual aids. After I tell him that he needs to stop with this line of questioning. He then proceeds to tell me he has clubs for women as well as men and wants to know if I want to work for him. I tell him no, and he proceeds to ask if I am embarrassed about my package size. 
He continues this for a couple minutes until I notice that I needed to do something in the D&D game we were playing and I tell him bye and hang up on him. Side note, I had the late night shift so we got very few calls so we played D&D &D at work. Discord is a scandalous place a gay guy told me in voice chat that he could turn me. Still the creepiest thing anyone has ever said to me've seen a few admins banned from servers for inappropriate sexual actions. Usually towards minors someone had two accounts in one server, one to RP and be kind with someone, and another to harass and bully that same person. They got banned this one time a big server was at everyone by an admin and made a long post about how all the admins and associated app was full of pedophiles. They locked the server to stop the chaos that ensued. I wrote lesbian fanfiction some years back and received multiple death threats including a picture of my apartment with an email that said I know where you live you dirty bitch and I will kill you. Dot. Had a guy write a multi-chapter, extremely graphic homoerotic story about a fictional wrestling community naming me and several of my friends by name. The writer refused to take it down and it took threat of lawsuit before the server finally removed it. I pissed off an online friend during my junior year of high school and it escalated to the point of the friend banning our mutual friends from talking to me and then befriending someone at my high school, also via the internet, so she could make her talk to me IRL. Thank god the girl from my high school was a chill person, otherwise it would have been some truly bizarre long distance feuding. The friends that were forbidden from contacting me did eventually contact me again but that only happened recently and by now we've already grown apart quite a bit. I should probably note that the person I pissed off was 25 at the time and everyone else involved was like 15 to 18. One of those details that's gotten weirder to me as time goes by. I was repeatedly sent anonymous death threats with personal information in middle school. I also had much, much older men ask me for nudes repeatedly. I am 15. When I would say no, or block them, more threats. This counts as serious BC it kinda freaked me out, I got a text once from an unknown caller which said this is not a threat but I want to eat your toenails. On no middle. I was wearing a full luchador costume because normal shit and this dude was just showing his butthole to people on the webcam. I'm kind of a smart ass and was like hey nice butthole dude. We ended up talking for a good 4 hours about the complexities of life and class warfare. Super chill dude actually. I'll never see him again, but if he's still flashing his butthole out there I hope you have the same experience I did. I'll never forget that butthole guy. This was back when I was still a minor. I was chatting to someone on Omegle, the things they were saying got weirder and weirder so I ended the chat and moved on. There was nothing wrong for about a week until I got a message on my mobile, it had my address, school details and a picture of me that had been taken from quite a distance. Ended up calling the police and the guy got arrested for stalking a minor and perversion. Never went on Omegle again after that. I started getting perverted texts from random numbers on my phone, as soon as I blocked one number, another popped up with the same cruel, perverted, personalized messages, it was clearly someone I had met, and I suspected it was a person I rejected recently. I decided to mess with them and respond to each text with a portrait of an American president, in chronological order, from George Washington to Barack Obama. It was surprisingly effective lmao they eventually got weirded out and gave up. I watched a guy take a literal horse in the ass. Yeah. Someone hacked into the mic and camera on my sister's computer a long time ago and randomly said creepy stuff like I see you and I'll be your friend to the end. We didn't know what to do so we immediately turned the computer off and it's been a brick ever since. Pretty sure that chick I was talking to when I was 14 was a dude. First of all, I had to learn about dangers of the internet on my own. I was in a discord server and a random creep and his hacker squad as they called themselves mass reported my account and got it banned. Then in my new account he threatened me with narco shit as I took screenshots of everything and told him I was going to report him. Then I just was hypocrite, he is actually from North Mexico, I pinged his IP. Him from US, then just left the server and he never spoke to me again. 
that was in 2018 and I'm still okay lmfao. I had a girl, who had very masculine features slash face, pretend to be a guy, and catfished me into talking to them for months. I eventually fell hard for them. This was about 13 to 14 years ago. We'd webcam, but their mic was always broken. Again, she's masculine so I didn't think anything of seeing her on camera. She even somehow got a male friend to voice note me, pretending it was him. And because he was always busy or out of the country, his friend, a female, would call me and we'd chat about him. It was her the whole time as the female friend. The worst part of all of this, I'm fucking queer, and she knew this. And wouldn't have had to do any of that anyway. Woman face palming, woman face palming. At that point in my life I had been with men and women. I forgave her because I chalked it up to maybe not feeling comfortable with her being labeled a lesbian because maybe she identified more as male like. I wasn't as aware and versed in gender identity expression as I am now, but I thought it was creepy as the lengths she went to, to pretend to be a guy, knowing full well I'd accept her as whoever she is, woman shrugging. Ok so as a kid, I joined social media. Once I turned 10 I did webcams on Omegle, did not really know any better originally for women. I was tricked a lot and women turned out to be men, as well as being recorded a few times. I was threatened to be killed, hacked, but the scariest part is that, my body would be posted on porn accounts and or YouTube I do not know if it's there in some part of the deep web or not I know it's not posted in but I have a feeling that it's posted someplace in deepest and darkest parts in the internet. My experience was a phone call so maybe it doesn't count as online? Anyway, several years ago I kept getting calls from this number I didn't recognize and I would just let it go to voicemail. The dude kept calling over and over again, never leaving a voicemail. So, sick of this person calling I figured I should answer it in case it is somebody I know. So I answer it, hello? And the guy says with a Spanish accent in a quietly creepy voice, hi. Who is this? I respond. He says something, but I didn't understand what he said. So I ask, can I help you with something? And he says, I love you. Officially creeped out, I say, is this some sort of prank call kids are doing these days? Still with that quiet, Spanish accent he says, no I'm serious. I just want to let you know, I love you. Then I said, um, look, I have no idea who you are and this is really creepy. So I'm gonna block you now, okay? K okay, bye. Right before I hang up he pleads, no please don't. I love you. Then I hang up and block the number. To this day, it still creeps me out. I have no idea if it was a prank call, if it was a wrong number, some disturbed individual, or if I had a creepy stalker. He never tried calling me on a different number or contacting me via other means. It was really weird. So this is back when MySpace was the big thing. I uploaded covers of songs I recorded to my profile, one of them being Avenue Maria. Had a guy out of the blue email me saying how he had downloaded it and listened to it on repeat 3000 times in one day. I don't know if that's possible or not. But I guess if he played it constantly for hours it might be. To this day even the nasty stuff I've been sent by Chubby Chase as offering to be my sugar daddy hasn't topped the Ave Maria dude. I love learning foreign languages, so I have both WeChat, a chat app popular in China, and Line, another chat app popular in Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, and some other countries. One day I got a message saying I missed you so much from both apps, in different languages from two people named both named Lin, with one in Chinese and other in alphabet, Lin. I used to write fanfiction but quit after a commenter got very nasty with me. I had a lot going on in my real life which was affecting my mental health at the time and didn't want this stress too. I thought I'd deleted my account but someone still managed to send me a private message the other day which was disgusting and weird. It was from someone called Sakura Bum and it said, Hi hello my husband with 8 dicks who is called Serena loved your fix. It I great tragedy that trolls who wear diapers pushed you to commit fanfic suicide. My grandma Harry Styles also loves your fix. Thank you.
A guy sent me pics of his family hanged on a tree. Was pretty disturbing I must say. Some random girl added me on Facebook, asked me if I liked sex, and told me to go in the bathroom and video chat her so she could show me her beautiful pussy. I blocked her right after that message. Somebody on r slash depression underscore help posted about planning on shooting their mom with a lot of info and I don't know what I can do to prevent it. I had someone message me and say they would commit mass murder. I think I reported it somewhere. I had a stalker on Facebook. I made friends with him on the internet site about 5 or 6 years ago, he said that my name had been on his mind since then. He created 4 or 5 different accounts to message me pretend to be a different person. He always asked sexual questions and one time that he pretend to be a different person and I did send him nudes. It freaked me tf out because he knows my real Facebook account with family and friends. He had texted me for one year and I ignored him but he keeps texting me, last time he texted me was two weeks ago. My friend recently got a new phone and someone keeps on calling her and when she blocks them, another number calls. Yesterday she saw a truck outside her home and when her dad came back the truck left. She was home alone at the time. I don't know if this counts as weird slash creepy but I once, kinda recently, had to expose a groomer on discord. Cimero. Confound it when I was around 11 to 13 and it spooked me good. Edit don't go to it now unless you like alive women on camera. I started getting these DMs on Instagram. Unknown user. The account was already deleted. Weird texts and pictures. Sometimes voice messages. The content wasn't exactly scary, but weird and eerie enough for me to freak out. The first DMs was a few weeks apart, but after a few months they just stopped. So yeah, I just went on with my life and forgot about the whole thing and out of nowhere I got a new DM. Unknown user. I never really did anything to try and stop it, didn't really know how and I kept thinking it probably just was some brat who thought it would be fun to scare me. I stopped receiving them after some time. But heck, my stomach still drop whenever I receive a DM request. One day I got a DM from a 5 minutes old account with is this, my full name? When I asked who it was they deleted the account. When someone on Craigslist found my Facebook account, just because we got into a small argument over price. And through that, somehow found my house address. I was on Facebook, just posted one comment somewhere once and months later I found an old notification of an Indian guy asking me if I wanted a sugar daddy. It was kinda funny but creepy cause I was clearly underage in all my pictures, I was like 11 twelfths back then. I was catfished when I was 15. I had sent pics for weeks to someone. They finally came clean, but they taunted me and then threatened to send everything to my mother. This was on a random website, so I'm doubtful it was actually someone that knew me. Oh Miguel. Back when I was about 10, I had been in an online chat slash roleplay group. Befriended a person there and we started chatting just one on one. Guy knew I was young, a kid. He had to be in his 40s. Kept asking for pictures of me, I was smart enough to refuse and would only send cartoon doll maker pictures. He would send me photos which got progressively more skin showing slash intent obvious. Was a smart enough kid to block him and never interact again. Though I never told my parents a likely pedo was trying to get to me. Actually, now that I think about it, I never told anyone before now. Started getting scam phone calls and emails etc nothing weird at first. Then the messages started arriving in my mother's native language. Let me tell you, her native language is not particularly common. How the hell they figured that out, I have no idea. Someone on Guy Online messaged me asking me to role play as a cat and they would act like a mouse. They wanted me to swallow them whole so they could run around in my stomach and then I would boot them out. Weird as hell. There isn't an easy way for me to admit this, but I was definitely a naive preteen and trusted the random folks I met on the internet. I was pretty active on gamers chat and met a lot of nice people there. 
Even though I was the youngest in the group they still invited me to their private forums where we really just talked about Kingdom Hearts and did completely innocent KH roleplay, that kind of thing. So after that honestly lovely experience I was a bit spoiled. I don't even remember where I met this one guy, but I ended up swapping AIM usernames with a dude and we were chatting there. He asked for a picture of me and I selected probably the worst photo I could have selected, which was me in a bikini. I was probably 13 in that picture. Man I cringe just thinking about it. Anyways, he said I was hot and sent me a picture of him. It was so pixelated it looked straight out of an anonymous interview on a cop show. This was back during the time when asterisks were more acceptable, and we were all playing that we were sitting on a park bench together. Very quickly he starts using asterisks to say puts hands up your shirt and starts to take off your bra. And I was like you ooh please don't say that. Well, my poor family computer gets the blue screen of death right after that. Fortunately it didn't have any lasting effects, I guess the virus just shut the computer down. But I was pretty freaked. Fortunately he never tried to message me again either. Was talking with my wife on the phone about our dog and daughter benefiting from obedience training. My next round of YouTube videos start playing obedience training schools instead of Dr. Squatch ads. This was on my laptop, mind you, not my phone. I do not have Siri enabled. Yeah I hear stories, and I refuse to use Alexa or anything at home, but this really caught me off guard. Heard in MW2 lobby this guy and kid got into it and the guy said this dude's address and his mom's name and said how he'll come over and fuck his mum again in front of him. Needless to say everyone left the lobby. Back in 2001 I was messaged by a woman on a MSN chat room. She was flirty, said she was rich and was a former winner of the Rose of Tralee competition. I had to look up what that was as I'm from the USA and she is from the UK, Irish beauty pageant, she always refused to send me a pic or talk on the phone. Finally, the Rose of Tralee put up an official website, and lo and behold, she was not the winner in any previous pageants. I asked her what was up with that and she said well, that's odd. I stopped responding after that. Another story that I've posted on Reddit before there was a person who I spoke to on a random social media site back in the day. Never had more than one or two impersonal conversations. Just a brief interaction with a stranger on the internet. Usernames and avatars instead of actual names and faces. It was 2008, or maybe 2009, and I was in high school at the time. Haven't spoken to the guy since. Again, I don't know his name or anything about him. Completely forgot about this transient interaction over 11 years ago. The website we were on doesn't even exist anymore. In 2020 he started sending me gifts to my house. He somehow found out my actual name and was able to locate my Amazon wishlist. Then he sends me a DM on Twitter letting me know that he's the one who has been sending me a bunch of stuff and he did it because he wishes more people in the world were like me. I was a moderator in a small community when I woke up and checked the messages I saw that there was quite a commotion going on and looked at the chat, apparently someone, let's call them person A, had sent screenshots of their direct messages with another person, person B, who said they were going to kill themselves. Since person B was quite the odd character and had only been here for a few days I couldn't rule out that they didn't kill themselves, so I contacted the support email of the platform so they could check on the person. I ended up collecting stuff chat messages, writing to people and replying to messages for 4 hours. The next day the person B comes back to the community completely fine, later that month I was checking for alternative accounts and found that person A had numerous accounts in our community, including the account of person B they faked the whole thing, just for fucking shits, giggles and attention that seriously did a number on me, like when you realize, across that screen might be a dead person. That's not healthy for your mind, with me not being the most stable to begin with. Later I found out they were known for doing this in other communities, as well as becoming friends with people and being the lovely nice but depressed girl and then breaking up with them or some other BS these people make me sick. I'm moderator on a quite obvious scam discord server. Not one, 
but two guys on there tried asking me out. I never met them Earl and we live in different continents so I said no to both. One of them sucked it up but had really over the top sad statuses. The other one begged me for my photo, claimed he knew where I lived, genuinely made people think he was stalking me, and had a full blown argument with person one over which one of them I wanted to bang. And now I'm somehow the bad guy on this. I started in 2000, I was 9 and didn't lie about it at the time. When I hit 11 I was officially 18f because you know what. Pedophiles on the internet don't even hide, they live their best life. I don't know if this counts, but it sure was creepy to me and I haven't forgotten it almost 20 years later. When I was in high school and early college, back pre-myspace and modern social media, I had a website with a blog and posted tons of photos. I was a cam girl, nothing nude or overtly sexual because I was underage most of the time, just a lot of live stream chatting and whatnot back before it was popular. I essentially shared my whole life with strangers. It wasn't uncommon to join a new website or message board and find out that someone had been using my photos. One day, a girl accused me of being fake, claiming she had been friends with the real me. After going live to prove my own identity, I finally found out the whole backstory. Melanie had been catfishing using my photos for over two years. She claimed to be a 20-something single mother, using photos of my nephews and I as her kids. She had this really elaborate sob story and people in her online social group had been sending her money and items for her kids regularly. The creepiest part is that one of her online friends, another young single mother, had finally saved up enough money to fly Melanie and her kids out to stay with her so they could escape her abusive ex. Melanie was supposed to fly out the following week. Once she got called out and asked to prove herself, she just completely disappeared. I would really like to hope that she was just an insecure girl who didn't know what she had gotten herself into. But part of me fears that she, or he, possibly had more sinister plans in mind because she often targeted young, single moms to befriend. Like what would have happened if her friend hadn't stumbled across my photos that day? Arguing with a cheater on COD and he reads my IP to me. Fucking nope. When I was 14, I went through a phrase where I really enjoyed talking to random people on the internet, chat rooms, omegle etc. I had plenty of weird people talk to me but this one always stuck. I once found this website where you could join video chat rooms and talk with like 8 people all at once whilst others could watch and comment. The stream was the usual rubbish, teenage boys and girls doing provocative dancing while I was just sitting there curious in this fluffy hat I loved at the time. Mainly getting bullied for not showing my bra, anyway, some guy and me privately saying he was watching the stream and proceeded to tell me I was beautiful. At this age I had never received this kind of attention before so like any 14 year old girl I was blushing. We spoke almost all night while he was just watching me on the stream, saying nice but I guess inappropriate things. I found out he was 18, which freaked me out a bit but I never had any male attention before, especially from someone older. I tried to convince him to join I really wanted to see what he looked like but of course, his webcam was broken so there was no way of me seeing who he was. At the end of the night I gave him my email, and we continued to speak for the next couple days. I got a weird feeling one day that maybe what I was doing was wrong and decided to block him, luckily, I haven't heard from him since. Now that I'm older, and wiser, I've realized only now how naive I was on the internet. During this time, I know now that even if he was 18, it was still wrong and insanely weird to talk to me like that. I feel lucky that I cut off the communication and nothing else came from it, unfortunately I did blame myself for a long time and I thought I was the disgusting one. My story isn't half as bad as the ones I've read on this thread, but I'm sure it could have been. Whenever it comes up to the anniversary of that night, I shudder thinking about how it could have been. I think every teenage girl goes through a phase where they get bombarded with messages by men thrice their age that have cars as their profile picture. I thought it was normal but it's starting to happen to my cousin who is 11 and just finding her feet on social media, and now it sickens me. I was on a me map, and someone sent me Anne Frank porn and accompanied it with my full address. 
In hindsight I should not have replied with, I already know where I live dumbass I did block him afterwards though. In October 2020 my Facebook account was hacked. I didn't have the two-factor authentication sorted for it at that point. But I went through the Facebook attempts for regaining control of my account again and again. I ended up having to send Facebook a photograph of my driving license four times before they thought hm, yeah, this is probably her. But the worst bit, was that they had gained entry into my email account too. Which had a totally separate password. I was terrified. I am a uni student, not some big earner. They never contacted me, but they must have been a professional or just an absolute wizard hacking, because they were relentless. Day 5 of no access to Facebook, they email me saying I can change my password and gain entry onto my account. I do this immediately as it was only a matter of time before the person saw the email in my account and did the same thing. I changed the email of my Facebook, which they had done also, to a completely new one, and updated passwords. Deleted the original email address and any accounts of any websites linked to it. Honestly doesn't sound like a big deal, but that person did everything in their power to stop me regaining entry onto that account. It was mad and really daunting. More being the instigator of creepy stuff. When I was in middle school my friend discovered Omegle didn't use end-to-end -end encryption when linking two computers for video chat. This made the other person's IP searchable to you. We played this game where two of us would be on the video and the third person would be out of frame with the keyboard doing an IP search and we would ask the person stuff like how's the weather in insert person's location most of the time people were super creeped out and left the chat but sometimes people would get mad and demand to know how we knew where they were. Pretty tame compared to some others, but when I was about 13 I posted a selfie on DeviantArt. Suddenly I received an onslaught of, their version of, friend requests and messages from grown men. They appeared to range in age from early 20s to 40s. The messages were all very creepy and predatory. Telling me how pretty I was and saying they wanted to get to know me. I had never received that much attention for any of my photography. Luckily I knew better than to respond or give out any information. Got into a civil discussion on Facebook. Person totally flipped a switch and became completely unhinged. Stalked me, found my wife, and actually called her at work to bitch at her. Commented on her work's FB page about hiring horrible people etc etc all over have a civil discussion on feral hog control and pointing that person to a friend of mine who is a certified expert in that area. I set up an account on DeviantArt when I was about 14. Within a week I got repeated messages from someone claiming to be a fan, only to get more and more demanding. Eventually, the creep began asking me to upload photos of myself. It was at this point I decided to leave, close the account and never look back. Nine years later and it still creeps me out thinking about it.